So you've gone vegan, but now you have to relearn how to eat all over again. Well, you're in luck. Today we're gonna go over five important vegan proteins that you should know about when starting a vegan diet. Hello, I'm Alexis, and I've been vegan for over seven years. Here are some things that I've learned along the way. Stick around to the end of the video for my favorite vegan protein option. First on the list is gonna be legumes. Now, what are legumes? Legumes are going to be your beans, your chickpeas, your lentils, your peas, I mean, lentils alone have 18 grams of protein per cooked cup. Come on. Chickpeas and black beans are two of my favorites in this group, but peas are actually a complete protein, meaning that it has a full amino acid profile and it's going to give you all the nutrients you need. Peas also have really important nutrients like magnesium, vitamin K, vitamin A, vitamin C, the list goes on and on. Chickpeas, AKA garbanzo beans, are really high on my list as far as what I like to eat for high protein dishes. It's easy to throw into a soup or into just like a stir fry situation or I even make a chickpea tuna with it. I really like it because it's very versatile. Other beans in this category are going to include kidney beans, red beans, navy beans, pinto beans, black beans. There's so many different types of beans. And most beans have 15 grams of protein per cooked cup. Next we have nutritional yeast. This is such a staple in my diet and it's so fun because you can pretty much add it to any dish that's like savory. It has like a cheesy nutty flavor and you literally just sprinkle flakes of it on top of anything. It's great on tofu, it's great in mashed potatoes, on vegetables, on popcorn, literally so many different things. There are eight grams of protein in half an ounce of nutritional yeast and it has a vitamin in it that is not super easy to come by in the vegan world and that is B12. B12 is typically found in meat, dairy, and fish but it just so happens to be in four nutritional yeast. This is a really easy way to get your dose of vitamin B12 and is a flavorful addition to your plate. Next we have spirulina. Spirulina is a blue-green algae that is a nutritional powerhouse. Just two tablespoons of spirulina equals out to eight grams of complete protein. It also has 22% of your daily recommended iron, it has a lot of other nutrients such as magnesium, riboflavin, potassium, and even a little bit of essential fatty acids. It's also a powerful antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and it has a lot of anti-cancerous effects. This is some well-rounded stuff. Spirulina can be added to smoothies really easily or can be taken in a tincture form or a pill form. Have you ever heard of or tried spirulina? Let me know in the comments below. Next is going to be nuts, literally. Almond, cashew, pumpkin. There are so many different types to choose from. Depending on the variety, nuts tend to have five to seven grams of protein per ounce. Nuts are awesome for just on the go uses. They're not really messy and I can just grab a pack as I'm leaving out the door. There are also a lot of different bars to choose from when it comes to nut-based bars. I really like the kind bars. Or you can make things really easy and just use nuts butters. You can eat them on sandwiches. I love to put them in my smoothies or my oatmeal, or you can just eat it with some fruit or celery. Now for my final and favorite option in today's video, soy. I love soy products. I think they're amazing as long as they are sourced the right way and they are organic. I don't have a problem with them at all. In fact, I would say that soy is one of my top protein sources. And here's why. Not only is it another complete protein source, it is so versatile. You have edamame, which are immature beans that can be steamed or sauteed and can be eaten on their own or put into a dish to spice it up. And then you have tofu and tempeh. Tofu comes in different degrees of firmness. I typically prefer the super firm or the extra firm just because I'm kind of a texture person and the ones that are firmer tend to be higher in protein So I don't have to eat as much of it to get what I need from it Tempeh is like a mix between edamame and tofu so it's going to be pressed and slightly fermented, which is actually really good for your gut, but it has kind of like um, like a firmer texture, but a little bit nuttier because the texture still has the beans in it. Tempeh is a great meat replacement when it comes to like a vegan rib. It's great on sandwiches, and I really like them in stir fries. I would say out of the three, edamame and tofu are gonna be my mains, but the amazing thing about all soy products is that they take on the flavor of whatever you cook it with. So in a similar way, that meat takes on 
different flavors based off of what you season it with, tofu does the exact same thing. Meaning, you can make it taste like anything. I told you, versatile. Tofu's great in almost anything. Soups, stir fries, scrambles, sandwiches, deep fried, breaded, sauteed, it can literally do anything. Soy proteins also contain iron, calcium, and 12 to 20 grams of protein per serving. Pretty incredible, huh? I personally love to snack on edamame. It's like one of my favorite things. And all I do is steam it, and it only takes a couple of minutes, and then I just season it. I put garlic, lemon, cayenne pepper, nutritional yeast. Ugh. I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. There are plenty of other options out there that I didn't get to in this video. So if you're interested in another video like this, let me know in the comments below and I will definitely take care of that for you. I hope you were able to gain some insightful knowledge on today's topic. Congratulations, good luck on your journey, and I hope to see you in the next one.